What's up, beautiful people? My name is Jason. I am a podcaster. You can say that I am a seasoned pos- podcaster. I've been doing this for almost one and a half year, I guess. Quite a long time I have spent. So before we start, I hope you had a fantastic Fourth of July celebration. Although we are kind of a day late, but I wanted to take a moment and wish you all a belated Happy Fourth of July. And I hope you enjoyed quality time with your loved ones, watching fireworks, enjoying delicious food, you know, having fun with one another. So, so yeah, you know, happy Independence Day to everyone. Nice to see Leslie, Natasha, Natalie, and Anusha. Thank you so much, guys, for joining this conversation. And so, typically, I don't do monologues, as you know, but you know, for a change, I I I decided to do a monologue because we had some last minute guest cancellation, and I was exhausted with work. and a lot of other things so i did not actually invest the time to look for another guest okay so my good friend leslie always says that you should do this more uh you should try monologues more so this is my way of experimenting new things so today i'm going to do a part 2 version of unveiling the messy side of podcasting and you guys are going to enjoy this you know why because i'm going to give you some interesting tips uh because i'm going to be speaking about scheduling and finding good guests and even high profile guests uh so so that you can have them on board on your show all right so let's deep dive into this conversation right away if any of you ladies who are down in the audience if you are interested in being a part of this conversation please ra- do not hesitate to raise your hand i would be happy to bring you up uh so that you know i don't feel lonely all right so So the thing which I want to say about podcasting in general. So last time, the part one which we did uh, last week, we spoke about cable management. We spoke about what kind of equipments you need to get. Uh, we spoke about soundproofing and acoustics. We spoke about storage and backup and post production and editing. So I hope you know that kind of give you that gave you a general idea. you know what are the things which are involved in podcasting and why it's actually not that easy as everyone claims it to be so there are a lot of messy things involved when you want to do podcasting and remember you actually don't get a return on investment right away so whenever you invest in podcasting uh, if you're doing it for an ROI yeah okay that's not going to happen guys okay so it it takes time Okay so be mindful that you have to give uh, your show the content which you produce at least an year or two so that it builds some momentum and traction All right so I want to also quickly make a, a few announcements the first announcement which I want to make is that I'm considering applying for the podcast awards uh, which is ongoing right now I think it started in July 1st uh but i'm considering whether i should apply or don't apply for it if you if you if you feel i should apply for it you know just dm me yes apply for it or no whatever okay just let me know the second thing which i want to ask you guys is that i'm considering changing the show time from 12 pm eastern standard time to 3 pm eastern standard time a 3 hour difference because i i think uh, there are a lot of continents which are actually missing australia being one of them i have a, a lot of listeners from australia and i want to make it accessible for them so if you feel 3 pm eastern standard time not this season but season 6 oh season 5 actually so if if you feel that would be a nice time please dm me or email me i would be happy to give it a thought Okay so let's let's deep dive into this conversation right away. All right, scheduling and finding guests or expert guests or or people who are into a certain niche and they have expertise. This can be very time consuming and it can be also be very challenging. Okay, this is one of the major messy side when it comes to podcasting. Okay. Now, few things which I want to let you guys know is that have an efficient and a very straightforward onboarding process for your guest okay the more seamless you make it the more easier it is to get information from people okay second if you have a process in place and there would be a lot of people who would not actually follow the process for some reason they just don't like processes they don't respect you or what you have to ask so say no to those guests who do not respect your process or your rules and the structure which you have in place irrespective of how famous they are okay because if they don't value what you do and what you bring 
uh, you should not value them also okay so i i do the same thing if 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 i don't vibe well with the guest no matter how credible they are i'm just going to simply say no i'm going to say that i'm so sorry i don't think we would be a good fit at this moment of time uh let me try maybe you know let, let's reschedule for another session and that rescheduling session never happens anyway third point which i want to make is that communicate very early on with your guest about Uh, what kind of show you do what are the listeners what are the targeted audience what is your show format and what kind of information you need from your guest okay and i would also recommend that you send out examples also so let's say that uh, you need like for for me i'm a designer so flyers are quite crucial and important for me so i send out flyers examples uh, so that they kind of know what to expect etc makes it very simple and easy Okay. If you take care of the visuals uh for your podcast, your guest would be happy to promote it. I've seen a lot of podcasters who don't know how to make flyers and they don't do it. It does not give something tangible to the guest uh, so that they can promote or say or share on social media. So in my case, I sent out post, uh I sent out Instagram story templates, I sent out newsletter which is kind of a gif I sent out blank templates sometimes also. I do a lot of other things, you know, which I send out as assets which they can reproduce, reuse, whatever. So it gives them the leverage of utilizing it to the fullest. I even go to the extent that I only promote it on social media. I upload things proactively. I tag them. So the only thing which they have to do is repost or reshare, like the one which you see on LinkedIn. So towards the end of this session, I'm going to share you some tips on how to find high profile guests or celebrities on your podcast. I didn't have a lot of celebrities uh, on my show yet. Uh, only reason being is because uh, it's not matching with what I'm trying to do. Hence I'm only looking at high profile guests, entrepreneurs specifically who can be on my show. So I'm going to share those ideas, uh, strategies towards the end of the show. So let me help you understand how to schedule and find good guests. Okay. If you are planning to start a podcast let's say in the month of November I would highly recommend you to start at least 2 months planning in advance. You need need at least 2 months in advance. Okay, what do you what do you have to do is you have to decide whether you want to go with a a live show or a pre-recorded show. Uh if you planning to have a pre-recorded show uh decide on a release date like when you want the episode to be released you also need to also figure out when you want to record the whole thing as well so like create a show schedule it's recommended to have like a fixed date and time uh what happens is it becomes easier for the guest to choose second it also becomes easier for the listener to pay attention on what you do when you do it etc plan how many interviews you like to do figure out the length of the interview decide how you want to do it do you want to just do audio like me the way i do it or do you want to do video and audio both which platforms you need to record and stream what kind of equipments you need okay have like an editing team in place who can do audio video and graphics all of them you know have everything in place before you start doing it create a template uh, like an email text message or a call template uh, with all podcast with all your podcast information and the steps which the guest needs to take uh, create a guest intake form so that you know people can fill in their information create a calendly account and and also create a list of potential guests you like to interview so these are some of the things which you have to do early on I know there's a lot of uh, it's kind of a big list but these are the things which you need to prep before you invest your time energy and resources in terms of finding people okay because if you don't have a structure in place it's going to be confusing for people whom you're going to be interviewing it's going to be confusing for your listeners it's also going to be confusing to the people whom you would be approaching uh whom you want to be a guest Okay so the more organized and structured you are the more confident you appear and the more easier it is uh, for a guest to say yes okay because uh, think about it you know have you been approached by podcasters you know who may have just started a show and you feel 
you know strange you feel weird like you know should i go in and do this because you know this guy or girl or whatever you know they don't appear to be very confident they don't have any episodes uh, lined up so i don't really know how they interview people etc 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 stuff like that i hope that's making sense okay give me a thumbs up if that's making sense guys okay let's see some thumbs up you know let's see some thumbs up i hope people are paying attention all right so i got one thumbs up okay but i could not see other th- other people saying thumbs up okay two thumbs up okay three <laughs> nice to see you cash you know thank you so much for joining the conversation and tammy as well all right so moving on guys you know i would take a pause for sure so so before we so these are the preps which you need to do and right after doing the press and preps and uh, once you have like a list of potential people whom you like to interview and you just need to have like an overview of like who you want to start off with okay and then start building on it okay so it's i recommend personally if you if you're starting new just interview people whom you know friends family uh, relatives whoever you can find because you need to practice and uh, it takes time for you to become confident especially when you do video or audio whatever just to be a host Uh, just to think creatively just to have that presence of mind i used to do shit you know when i used to, when when i did my initial episodes uh, you know all sweaty nervous i didn't know what the fuck i was up to like all s- scattered here and there okay but what it did is that you know the guest the people whom you know they encourage you they motivate you and 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 over the course of time you know you figure out like what are your strengths what are your weakness and how to tackle it stuff like that so i recommend uh, that you know you interview people whom you know in the beginning okay so it helps you practice it helps you increase your confidence that's my first recommendation now let's say that you know you have surpassed that you have like 10 to 15 episodes with people whom you know now it's time to move on so how you do research you know find a potential guest okay look at their bio look at their profile try to see if they align with the theme of your podcast and the topics which you want to have on their show okay so it means uh, you know analyzing their bio reading their stuff reading their content on their website social media in fact you know even watching interviews i have watched countless interviews 45 minutes 60 minutes it doesn't matter uh if you want to have a good episode you need to be dead sure the person whom you're going to be having on board uh is in a line in in alignment with what you want to achieve uh sometimes that also involves you following the individual subscribing to their newsletters uh find find people with credibility and 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 good storytelling ability so it's possible that an individual may be highly credible but if they don't know how to communicate that story in a form of an interview it's pointless uh, to have them as a guest so look at past videos look at past podcast interviews look at you know all the content the individual has put in out there and try to see uh, try to analyze use your brain and just figure out you know if this is going to be a good fit sometimes a lot of people fake it also so you need to have like a an alert mind or a cautious mind in place just to make sure you're not getting fooled uh, by the opposite person who is pretending to be knowledgeable as a guest okay so just be careful on those lines okay because you don't want your show's reputation to be impacted by you suggesting somebody who is not good uh, or promoting their items when you know the person is is is, is going to be cheating or scamming people stuff like that so you don't want to risk your reputation just uh, just because okay you were not able to do research so that's number 1 very very crucial and this is where the your maximum amount of time is going to go and that's why i said 2 months this 2 months is going to give you enough time period to figure out like you know which individuals uh, you want to be on on the show so you can spend like 2 to 3 hours a day maybe uh, just looking for looking going through profiles i generally do this on linkedin i i i scan their bios uh, go and and i recommend that you know linkedin na- sales navigator i think it's a the premium version of linkedin i think this is pretty cool uh, because it gives you a lot more in depth information about a person 
an individual what they are up to it also gives you the flexibility of sending dms directly to those individuals because sometimes certain accounts are locked uh in a, i found the navigator to be a very healthy uh option not healthy but you know an an ideal solution to reach out to people who you are unable to just having a basic profile so i'm going to take a pause there okay and i'm going to ask natalie and let's do some questions okay natalie uh, so are you are you guys following me do you have anything you like to ask me check with me go ahead so i was going to ask when you're reaching out to your potential guests um what it, have you found that there's a particular language or a particular way you entice them to participate with you yeah so yeah i i i do i do create a template and although i do have a template but this customizable template so the reason i'm asking people or i just recommended that you should research about the individual is when you reach out to them it's you should not say a lot about you okay you should be speaking a lot about them okay so let's say that natalie if i have to approach you and let's say that we don't know one another i will reach out to you natalie and i would say that natalie i i did go through your profile i found this to be very interesting i stumbled upon this particular video uh, which i found when you speak we spoke about and at this time stamp i i heard you speak about so and so and i found this to be very interesting and unique uh you know i would really appreciate if you can be a guest on my show and speak into that specific thing which i heard you speaking about whatever something on this line and i would personalize it and i'll send it to them because you want to make the opposite person realize that you have actually invested time energy and resources to find out who they are the moment you show them that you care and you are making sure uh that you know the person is a good fit and and that's why you know i'm reaching out to them because i know for sure this is what you bring i see your value uh i think people are much more respectful there are probability of you getting a yes from them is high now remember when whenever you send out emails okay sometimes it just goes to spam uh so what i generally do is i not only send emails okay i also dm them personally on linkedin if i if i have if i see them on facebook instagram wherever i also dm them there okay i even fill out their contact form and send them that request so that uh, you know we are making sure that you know communication would reach out to them and it's not going to get diluted by any means i do also make a note towards the end of my message stating that i have sent this out to multiple platforms uh, you know trying to reach out to you Uh, because i was unsure which one is going to work so if you do get this message again you know please ignore it or please delete it whatever and sometimes uh, i have also noticed that sometimes just surely because you send them repeated uh, messages uh, they kind of embrace it they 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 feel like you know you are really interested and you you really want them to be on the show uh, maybe sometimes because of that they say yes too yeah so i'm going to take a pause there so natalie does that answer your question at least yeah yes it does yes it does okay I, do you have I, a like, follow up question well i i just like a thought that um the little pieces you put in there about making sure that they know you've reached out to them a couple of different ways and i like how that also builds familiarity for them as well so there's a couple of points you made in there that i didn't think of that i think are really good oh nice <laughs> all right all right so let's hear from leslie so so leslie do you have a question for me or are you driving i i am biking and i'm at the beaches of cape may for the week on holiday so happy holiday everybody who celebrates for us now lee how are you jason um quick question so i find what what are your what are your thoughts of quality versus quantity Okay this is very s- comes- Uh-huh go ahead go ahead Yeah that was the question um you know I guess initially you're trying to find like you said and I think it's great what you said finding 
uh, friends, family, to kind of feel, you know, get. All right, so quality control. You know, that's that's technical glitches there. Uh, I think it probably is the network, but I think I understood your question. So to answer that question, so this is very simple. It's very subjective to what kind of show you want to present. So there are certain podcasters who spend a very limited amount of time interviewing an individual, if it's an interview-based show. So let's say that if I do 20 to 30 minute interviews, uh, I think this individual might, le- might be heavily focused on volume. Okay, probably. Okay, but I can't say for sure. So it's very subjective uh, to what kind of show you want and, and how what is the duration you want and how frequent you want to do it. So if you are an entrepreneur and this is like a side gig, I would not recommend you to do heavy volumes because that's just going to exhaust the fuck out of you. Uh, I would sincerely uh, recommend that go slow. Okay, so a show once a, a, a show once a week, it will help you to pay attention to your business, help it grow, do the work which is required and and still conduct an episode once a week. So that's what I would recommend. Okay, but I have also seen many podcasts uh, and I have a lot, a lot of close friends who actually do daily interviews too. Okay, and they still have work and, and they still have their jobs or their businesses which they are managing at the same time. So if you can take the pressure of having daily interviews done and if you're okay with it and if that's volume is the kind of thing which you want to go ahead with, that's completely your call. I do my show for about 90 minutes in length. Whenever I do my interviews, I spe- specifically focus on quality. And uh, my show has a certain format to things. I can't do 90-minute shows every day. It's, it's next next to impossible. I, I would just... Exo- I will burn out. I might do, just do a few episodes. And I will, I will just decide to scrap it. So... So as a podcaster, I would recommend quality or quantity is very subjective to the kind of show and what kind of schedule you have, what are your priorities and the things which you want to achieve out of it. Now, remember, whether you do 100 episodes in 100 days or, or 20 episodes in 100 days, okay, it's a listener who determine if the content which you're putting through uh, is quality or no no matter how much you you want to focus on quality it's the listener who determines so if you have good analytics so you know whatever platform you would be using to broadcast your podcast it's going to give you some analytics like how many listens a certain episode has you can figure out like which kind of guest bought you the maximum amount of listeners uh, because that kind of content really worked. So in in my case, in 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 my uh, my show, if you take my show for an example, I've got the highest amount of engagement uh, from 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 shows which is related to marketing, which is related to PR uh, and public speaking. So these are the ones. Uh, which brings the maximum amount of listeners to my show. It keeps changing depending upon what kind of content you put through. Uh, you just have to pay attention to those small details. Leslie, does that does that answer your question or do you have a follow-up question? No, that was excellent. Um, but I do have a follow-up and maybe this is something you will address later on. Uh, but I'm still scratching my head as to the fact that my one of two podcasts generation foundation is the gen z versus the gen x environmental issues and the viewpoint of a 21 year old versus mom um and we we got 241 views from very minimal uh podcasting that we do just because i'm at the mercy of him through college and the army um versus my other podcast which i really put my heart and soul into and i put a lot of time into it and yet I'm getting more hits on one that I'm not really putting a lot of time into. So maybe that's something you could address, you know, at a later time. But that was the other question. Thanks. Okay, let's address that. So I think it has to do a lot with the the naming. 
okay how you name your show okay when you put certain words okay does that make it practically realistic for people to search for it you know is that what people are searching for it or what kind of content uh, are you specifically focusing on a certain show so what i have noticed when it comes to health in general there are a lot of podcasts competing to be in the same space as you so that could be one of the reason why uh, you may not be getting that same momentum which you want so i would encourage you to figure out like a a niche and that's why we recommend to niche and remember when you niche down or when you are being very selective uh it does not become an overnight success right away uh, but at least the people whom you get as a listeners maybe just a small amount but you know for that sure uh, they would stick around because that's the exact content you want uh so again you know it it it, it 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 completely depends upon how you name it like for an example my podcast name is very confusing itself because uh it's you know it kind of sh- speaks about design when you hear it for the first time my show name is brand identity design but i don't do much speaking about uh design i i, I speak mostly into business and entrepreneurship so sometimes i also feel that that could be one of the reason why i'm not getting the same momentum as everybody else okay but you know my content is working like people are listening to it so i mean something i'm doing is right so i don't think you can figure everything out at the first go so it's a gradual process see if it see how it goes so uh like you know like how i asked you you know should i change the sh- uh, change the show timing from 12 to 3 Uh, what if if i change from 12 to 3 maybe i might end up getting new kind of listeners who are on linkedin and other platforms uh you never know so it's all about experimenting uh, especially when your show does not have too much uh, traction yet i think that's the best time to experiment and try new things out so you can try with a, a different timing you can play around with different kind of content Uh, you can you know work out like whether you want to interview people or whether you want to do a monologue uh, and what you can do is you can heavily rely on analytics to give you some conclusion and idea uh, what is working out you can specifically focus on a certain demography uh, certain age certain location you can find all these details on podcast analytics uh, on whichever platform you would be broadcasting from so stuff like that you know i hope that helps Le- Le- Leslie does that answer your question? Yes, and I think the key that you said is experimenting especially when you're initially, you know, I'm I'm 2 or 3 years into podcasting. So this is the time to really tweak and figure out algorithms and you know, if my show title is really spot on. So thanks Jason. Absolutely, absolutely. So moving on guys, okay? So the first point which I made to find potential good guests is is researching. okay finding if they are a good fit it's a time consuming process but this is where the magic lies uh, because when you research i use a notepad i write down important points which i found interesting because sometimes you're just consuming content and you may forget it and i write it on a notepad that okay this point at this time this person said this Uh, which i found very interesting and unique uh, i try to dig more if there are blogs or testimonials or whatever content i could find on the individual's profile which speaks into that even more okay second you also sometimes you know guests uh, do have a certain idea in mind uh, they may have a certain goal in mind and they might be promoting that specifically so when you reach out to guests saying uh i want to actually interview for x and they would say that we are not focusing on x we are focusing on b or y or z whatever so you 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 want to like figure out if if x or y or z whatever they are recommending it is going to be in alignment with what you want to do okay as long as it's aligned well I reach out to them and ask them okay no problem let's do that okay second point scheduling your guest okay this is a pain in the ass so i generally do scheduling using calendly okay no matter how well planned and organized you are your guest have a busy professional life they have conflicting commitments and and most of the time especially my guests they live in different time zones okay so 
you have to ensure that you are flexible first of all with your schedule if you have a fixed show timing like like mine okay then communicate that with your guests that you know i have a fixed show and this is the specific time uh most likely if you send them an early calendar uh for them to book as a guest they usually book and and the reason i send out calendly uh, link to book it is it becomes a part of their schedule so so it does not conflict with other things which they are planning to do so that's why you know i said prep yourself at least 2 months in advance okay so that more people okay so they would look at your schedule and they are like okay so it's about 2 months ahead so on this time okay let me book it so you know for sure uh, they are reserved okay now this th- doesn't mean that you know they can ditch you last minute uh, some people no matter how you know organized you are they simply just don't pay attention okay and these are those individuals you should not have on your show if they don't respect your process please don't them have them as a guest sometimes some people genuinely want to make it but you know they are unable to due to some commitments maybe some sort of family emergency maybe work commitments give them the option to reschedule uh, to a later date okay the reason i ask you to do this early on uh, is because in the event uh, if the guest decide not to show up uh, you can actually play with your schedule or play with the potential list which you created already so like i said you know create a potential list in the beginning so if you have that excel sheet created with all the potential people whom you want to interview okay you can decide like you know which is the next person i want to reach out to you don't have to do research at that time you can just simply reach out uh, to individual whom you feel are have been qualified already so that saves time energy and resources stuff like that so scheduling is a pain in the butt it is a lot of logistical work involved uh, you know you have to figure out how to be flexible so for example my next week's guest uh, we are going to be speaking about copywriting you know how how great headlines makes a difference and she reached out to me her name is alison she reached out to me and said jason you know i have some commitments can we reschedule the interview by like an hour or two would that work out for you and i was like okay no problem let's go ahead and do that okay now so that kind of flexibility is what i'm asking they are being respectful to you and they are like you know i want to really make it uh, can we extend it by an hour or two so yeah stuff like that so scheduling uh, is a pain but you know it's overall messy uh, it is very time consuming uh, because because when they when people cancel it i i think you, it it just gives you immense amount of stress and whenever you're reaching out to individuals especially in different time zones over email or over text message or i message whatever platform you're using please please ensure you write down the time zone which they are in and mention the exact time so for an example uh, if my show is at 12 eastern standard time and if i'm going to be interview someone from the uk i would mention uh, 12 pm eastern standard time slash 5 pm bst on my email so that i'm communicating my show time as well as the time zone they are uh, the person who would be interviewing at okay so that there is no confusion okay sometimes people find time zones to be confusing you can use any sort of time zone uh, calculator to figure this out uh, you may have seen i post a generally an event time announcer link on my uh, podcast Uh, not my podcast but the event page on linkedin the reason i do it is because i send out this link to my guests also so that irrespective of which time zone they are are in the moment they click on that link it auto populates their time uh, this is the time of the interview whatever just makes it easy so you know just being an extra cautious there so that there is no confusion especially uh, when you have people from different time zones so this is just my suggestion and feedback okay number 3 people forget things uh, again no matter how much you are organized your guest would end up forgetting about your interview so do not wait till the last minute okay reach out to them early on when i say reach out to them so let's say that i book natalie uh, for an interview let's say on the 30th of july 
I'll make sure I will reach out to Natalie for guest information like their bio, profile, headshots, stuff like that, at least two weeks in advance. The reason I do it is because in the event uh, Natalie forgets to send me out all this information, I would not have to ditch my work or the things which I do as a part of my business and start focusing on figuring out Natalie's uh, you know, show or podcast episodes, stuff like that. So I want to be a little more organized. So what I would do is I would nat na I'll give Natalie a deadline. Uh, Natalie, you have to submit information by the 15th of July, by or before 15th of July. If you don't do it, then we are just going to reschedule you for another time slot. Okay, so this makes uh, it respond. This makes you responsible. This makes the guest responsible, and most likely, I have noticed people ensure that they submit uh, details by or before the due date or the deadline, whatever. You also uh, want to give your guests enough time period. So, uh, I would send out that email right now on the fifth of July, asking her to submit details at least by the fifteenth, or on maybe I might send it on the first of July. Uh, you want to give your guests enough time so that you, they don't feel pressured also. Okay, if your intake form is lengthy like mine, I will make sure that I communicate that early on to my guests uh, that, you know, it's going to be a, a time-consuming process. It's going to take about 15, 20, 30, whatever minutes for you to fill this up. And uh, so w what the guest does is that, you know, they they figure things out and uh, they s only sit to fill this in when they have that much time period available. So you're just being a little, uh, you're just doing a little extra communication, but this is just to keep the guest, uh, you know, time in mind, being re being respectful to them. Go ahead, Natalie, you have a question? Well, it wasn't a question. It was um, an add on to what you were saying. That process that you just talked about of, of building a timeline with your guests it's also very good for that that busy person because it keeps them focused on what do I have to do by when, and the chances are that they won't uh, make it or they their confusion about what am I supposed to do for the podcast. It eliminates a lot of that, it, and they feel comfortable and safer actually because they're so busy. You set up everything for them piece by piece by piece, and they're like, oh, I just have to slot myself in, do this, and take myself out. So it actually is very comforting to the guests to have you so precise and informative and communicative so that they know exactly what they're walking into. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. And as you guys know, Natalie, Leslie, uh, all these individuals and even cast down in the audience, I have interviewed all these individuals. They have actually experienced my process firsthand. So they kind of know what I'm really referring to. And, and, and as Natalie said, you know, just building up on that point, the more comfortable you make the experience for your guest, uh, the more appreciative they are about who you are and what you do. So if you show respect and if you show appreciation, if you value their time and if you're being respectful to them, they would indeed respect you in return. All right. So again, communication is key. Okay. It is messy because you have to send out reminder emails. I send out three reminder emails. So let's say I have to get Natalie's information by the 15th. I will send out one email on the 5th my second email on the 10th, the third reminder email, at least on the 12th. Okay, what this does is that, you know, and, and you can automate this process. You don't have to manually do it. I manually do it because uh, I like doing it manually. Okay, show some personalization to things. So, so just send out those reminders. Some people like it, some people don't. And those who don't like it, they will let you know that please do not send me reminders. And that's okay. Okay, but do continue sending reminders. Okay, uh, you know, because uh, this ensures that, you know, things are in tax, everything is streamlined and organized. Not to that individual who said, you know, don't send it to me. Uh, but you know, if they generally are not saying anything, send out reminders. And do not send out reminders once they have filled in the form. Okay, the moment somebody fills in your intake form and sends you all the necessary details, uh, and if you find there is something missing out or confusing, do reach out to them immediately and let them know that, you know, I, I see that you fill this thing. 
uh, you know, you have sent me your bio, but I don't think the headshot is working. Can we try another headshot? Or I found your bio uh, to be a slightly lengthy. Can we rework on that? And or something like, you know, I found your topic which you shared. You know, uh, I don't think that's gonna really work. Can we try another topic? Or what else can, are you comfortable speaking about? So this is like a pre-interview call wherein you are having a conversation with your guest and trying to figure out what kind of episode you want to go ahead and and produce on that event date, whatever. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so send reminders, uh, communicate, uh, you know, about the the show expectations. Uh, let them know the dates, share time zones, you know, make it easier for them. Okay, now the fourth point which I want to highlight is that prepping up uh, for the show. So prepping prepping up for the show again is is you know the objective is to produce a, a you know a nice successful episode uh, so you know you want to do pre-interview research research about the specific topic make the individual comfort uh, comfortable and 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 in my case you know what I do you know with all the research which I do about the guest I sent out questionnaires well in advance and I'll tell you why okay this is not to make the show scripted my show is actually done live. As you see today, I'm recording it uh, right now as we speak. Okay, and this is going to go the exact same way. Some people like editing. I'm not a big fan of editing. It conflicts with my time uh, because I have to do other things. So I just want to do it live and have practiced uh, so that, you know, we don't have hiccups during the show. And if there are hiccups... I have programmed my head well enough with a lot of mistakes which I did in my past. You remember, Leslie, we spoke about experimenting. So I've experimented so much that I know if something goes sideways, I'm well equipped to handle it. Okay, so that's that's what practice means. That's that's why I said, you know, try to do interviews with people whom you know. Because if you mess up, you know, it's not going to affect your reputation. Uh, this is going to build confidence over the course of time. So, so prepping up. Uh, means researching about the individual, uh, researching what topic they want to speak about. And it's not necessary that you need to be aware of the topic, like you have to be an expert in that field itself. Uh, a guest can be an expert. Okay, you may have just basic information. Just ask your guest, you know, you said about so and so, I, I just don't understand. Uh, would you mind just explaining it? Or send me materials so that I can read about. So invest a little time to get what they're trying to do. Okay, once you have the podcast episode title and show description uh, created, share it with your guests. Ask them if this aligns with what you want to speak about. Uh, they will tell you yes, no, or they will remodify it, whatever. This shows you being respectful to their opinion and their opinion uh, does matter uh, you know, to you. So, you know, I, I think that really gives a nice vibe. And then, uh, you know, if possible, especially if you're doing live shows, I would highly recommend you to uh, send out interview questions in advance. Like I said, not to uh, make it scripted. I think it gives the opposite person, the guest, the confidence as to what to expect uh, from the show. I naturally tell them that, you know, although I'm do sending you questions, it doesn't mean that, you know, it's scripted and you have to just follow the same thing. Uh, you know, if I find something interesting which you're speaking on, we might just build up on that. Okay, but since it's being recorded live and we don't want to mess things up, that's why I'm sending you questions. So you have a, like a general idea of what to expect. I even give my guests the option to go through the interview questions well in advance. So I send, them, uh, send it to them a couple of days in advance uh, so that they can go over it uh, and... And, and, and give you feedback, like I didn't like the question number six, maybe we can phrase this differently, or maybe you can ask me something else, whatever. Okay, uh, more, I have not experienced anybody saying anything bad about me sending them questions in advance, like I have never got any negative feedback, but I have observed a lot of people simply would not check your email because they are confident that you know they can do it uh, impromptu. So you would find a lot of people who, who like to go impromptu and they don't like, uh, you know, preparations or going through stuff which you're sending. Be respectful to them. Let them know that the show is going to be recorded live. Okay, so although you're impromptu, I would 
recommend that you go through it so that you have like a general idea of what I'm going to speak about. Okay, just go through it. uh you know that's my recommendation but if you still don't want to it's perfectly fine leave it to them at the end of the day it's their show if they mess it up that's actually their problem not really yours because you had given them a platform and an opportunity to make the very best out of it help your client with the call to action uh sometimes uh, they may have a lot of offering and you may be speaking about a specific topic okay and they might find it a little challenging to decide like what call to action they should present as a guest okay so help them narrow that down i think that makes it a lot easier all right so i'm just going to take a pause there uh let's hear some questions and if anybody else in the audience want to come up and just ask me questions about podcasting please do not hesitate i'm not going to bite i'm going to tell you the truth the messy side of podcasting which usually people don't speak about so let's hear from natalie natalie do you have a question hi uh- No, more so thinking about once you go through all of this scheduling and like how do you get rid of the nervousness for the guest? Is that uh, something you want with them like are they like you know all tight and wound up because they've never done it before? Uh I Okay, so as a host what I have noticed if your guest is nervous okay I usually uh, make them feel comfortable so probably you know have like an early on session try to know who the person is uh maybe I'll go through some of the videos and find something interesting uh they like and make it a part of my questionnaire so I would be like you know I remember uh for example natalie i remember you saying on some of your video this is just an example okay on on some of your interviews or some of the content which you produce on social media uh, you have this fascination with this blueberry cake so i might have something similar you know i may have a question about a blueberry cake i might ask you to speak on that because that is something which you love and admire so you feel comfortable so so it's very subjective so uh, like it, my show has like a a certain section wherein i just have fun with my guest asking them silly questions so i just wiggle those interesting things there okay and i do send out these questions also well in advance so that my guest knows what to expect okay at the end of the day like you know what you can do to help your guests who might be a little nervous is that let them know that if you get stuck at any point during the conversation do not worry i would take care of it okay i'll help you out i'll guide you uh, how you would do it as a host uh, you would chip in chime in say something which you feel uh, if you feel the guest is you know getting stuck or moving to another route altogether direction help them to navigate and come back to the topic okay be respectful be kind be generous okay remember uh, nobody is a perfectionist nobody knows everything we all learn gradually Uh, so it's okay okay so have that compassion and that kindness i have interviewed a lot of people who are just basically new uh, and i'm and i'm completely okay with it because i find something interesting about the individual and sometimes uh, you know you can have people who may not be very credible or they don't have a big reputation give them the opportunity imagine uh, you know imagine you looking out for a job okay and this is what you speak to the human resource person right give me an opportunity i'll prove i'm worth it you know i i would do good you know something great whatever something similar uh, do not hesitate to give people the opportunity irrespective uh, what scale of business what kind what size or scale their business is or how much money they are making give people the opportunity if you find uh, them genuinely good okay irrespective Uh, whether they have a following whether they don't have a following it does not matter maybe that one interview which you do uh, can make a sizable difference to the opposite person's confidence so yeah something on those lines natalie does that answer your question or do you have a follow no that answers it because I, i always think you know there's the practical side of podcasting and then once you the interviewer in the mix and your guest is there sometimes the conversation can go sideways or they're uncomfortable or um the person isn't on the same page with what you discussed prior 
and I've seen that in other places. So that's where the curiosity came for me. Ah. So I have seen a lot of podcasters who might become a smart ass and try to fuck your guest up <laughs> in the process uh, because they want to prove a certain <laughs> point, <laughs> whatever. And I have seen I have seen a lot of podcasters who do this. Now remember, uh, as a guest, you have the ability to walk off the interview. uh you know without any hiccups i don't know why you guys push stick around when the opposite person is just being treating you bad so i feel as a podcast host you have to have to be very respectful of the person whom you are being interviewing uh i make sure like if you ask me i make sure i'm not going to do anything uh, which will affect my guest and their reputation on my show because if you treat your guest bad okay it it has a ripple effect you know people would not take you seriously or people would not like your content or you will build up a reputation which you don't want to build up so i would highly encourage you to be respectful to your guest do not make them look bad because if you make them look bad it also reflects as you as a host okay do not be an ass with your guest and at the same time i recommend my guest is that if you find a host to be not res- being respectful to you or what you bring or your opinion and if they are treating you bad please walk away from it that interview is not going to be worth it uh, it's 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 going to be a bad experience overall if you have to choose between uh, your mental peace and a podcast episode you should choose your mental peace okay So I hope that helps Natalie. Yes, thank you. I I appreciate what you said about the mental piece because I I think that is key. Awesome, awesome. Let's hear from Leslie. Leslie, if you're still biking so or cycling, <laughs> do you <laughs> I'm done. All right. I'm done. Do you have a question for me? Um I just wanted to make a comment and just through all your hard work and the way that you present everything and all that you put into it. I've never met a podcaster that puts the time and the love and the energy that you do. And it's it's very impressive and you have a way of making people feel like we're sitting in your living room or your den and we're just having this conversation and you have that gift of relaxing people and I try to do that when I speak even if I'm speaking to you know over 50 people really try to create you know looking people in the eye now that's the only other thing you know we're not doing that we don't have that eye contact but you create that eye contact through the energy you exude um to everybody that's listening so i just wanted to thank you for all your hard work cuz it's definitely um look how you are just growing in leaps and bounds so yeah just if it's in your heart put it your heart and soul into it right and and things will start happening so yeah i'm enjoying this conversation thank you leslie i know you have been a supporter from the very beginning she's not only my good friend she's like my family and she gives me regular feedback so thank you thank you leslie i really value your opinion and what you just shared right now it is a lot of work and and the reason why it you know you know it's it's motivating for me to do this uh, going that extra layer uh, is because i i think that's the way it should be i don't do it because that's how i feel uh, i just do it because i feel that's the right way to approach things and i feel if more people do it uh, i think they would have a better show not saying that mine is the greatest or anything it's in the process of being great All right so something of that nature i hope you guys that makes sense okay the next thing which i want to highlight is handling no shows last minute changes all right so there are a lot of guests who i have interviewed sometimes they don't show up at all uh, most people have i have interviewed do uh, intimate or let me know in advance that they won't be able to make it okay but if you get this intimation a day or two prior to the event date it just stresses and exhausts you as a host because uh you've been promoting this way too long okay and you still have to do the show okay irrespective whether the person makes it or no because you have been promoting this for an entire week so my recommendation to any guest is that 
unless and until uh, you know you can't really make it and there is some sort of an emergency then only uh, refuse to be a guest because it really mentally affects the host uh, because last minute things you have to look out for another guest create content around it and you have to do all that work which you try doing it for 2 weeks within a stipulated period of 2 time i have to stop my work reject all my clients stop making money and i have to reinvest my time energy resources to redo this everything from the beginning so as a guest what i recommend is that if you are a guest and if you have been allotted a slot to be interviewed by x individual please uh you know be respectful and please try to make it and only and only there is some sort of a work emergency family emergency if there is some sort of an emergency uh and that's why you can't make it so so it be it like you know just just be honest to the host let them know that you know i'm so sorry i i really want to make it work uh but you know i i can't sim- i simply can't you know due to x and x whatever is that all right uh with you whatever and as a host what you can do is you can give them options like you know would you like me to reschedule it by a couple of hours maybe do an early interview give them those options uh sometimes maybe a couple of hours here and there can simply save that episode so by moving the time here and there a bit if that helps it's okay all right please do that whatever so yeah and and, and this is the reason why i say that have like a a list okay list of potential people have like an excel sheet spreadsheet whatever uh, you know have a list of people whom you potentially want to interview uh, some of them may have said yes some of them you have not reached out to or some of them have responded and they are a, a part of your waiting list like i have a waiting list for the kind of guest i want to interview on my show i have a lengthy list i have not filtered them through okay but i have a list so if i want to potentially reach out to anybody uh i can just reach out to those individuals now if you want to avoid research and if you don't want to actually invest a lot of time figuring out if the person is good okay then uh then i would recommend uh, that you reach out to an existing guest whom you have interviewed or a friend mostly guest whom you have interviewed on the show because they have a uh, real time experience okay and ask them to recommend you people whom you can interview on your show uh because what it does is that it filters out the crap okay and you ensure that you get somebody nice and authentic and original because it's been recommended by somebody whom you interviewed so that saves a lot of time so if if let's say that if today I had to do an episode i would just reach out to leslie and and i would ask leslie leslie do you know somebody uh, who is an entrepreneur uh, you know who is, has an interesting take on this Do you know anybody who can speak on this? Can you recommend somebody who can have as a guest maybe tomorrow day after? And Lexi would be like, "Okay. So I I know Natasha or I know Kaz, I know Brian or whatever, uh whoever and you can you can interview this individual." Okay, ask Leslie to do like a uh you know, like an introduction, like a warm introduction over LinkedIn, DM, iMessage, email, whatever. Uh, and do an introduction and take things from there okay it's not leslie's responsibility now it's my responsibility and and i will interact with the guest uh, find out what the topic they want stuff like that this is the reason i recommend do planning and preparation well in advance this is the reason i said ha- give them 2 weeks deadline uh, in the beginning if you remember uh, because that 2 weeks helps you to find another person that 2 weeks helps you uh to decide like who can be the next guest if they don't make it whatever so that's why that's why the deadline for 2 weeks i hope is that making sense so i'm going to take a pause there okay just ask natalie and leslie do you guys have any question because now you know once this ends i'll speak about how to find high profile guest all right Nat- natalie do you have a question i know you have to run you have a meeting i suppose okay maybe she's already in the meeting Yes. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> meeting. Um I'm just waiting for everybody to show up. Um I I'm I'm good. I think you've made some really salient points and I think that this was very informative. Awesome. You know, I feel like um when we think about putting things together, we only think about the little bitty steps. We don't think about plan it out. Give yourself time. 
make sure you cover your bases and get to the details of it. And this is very helpful between last session and this session, just kind of figuring out what kind of time I have to make a commitment if I decide to do something like this or what kind of time commitment someone should have if they're going to consider. So thank you. You're welcome, Natalie. Thank you so much uh, for being here. And if you have to run, that's perfectly fine. Okay, if you do, <laughs> fine. Uh, you know, if, if you... If the meeting starts, it's okay. All right, so I just want to ask Leslie. Leslie, do you have a question before I move on to the high-profile guest? No, please proceed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, so this is the strategy which I use to find high-profile guests or celebrities uh, for your podcast. It requires a little strategic approach. Okay, first thing is that you need to have, you need to define what value you're bringing to that individual by having them on your show. So, first of all, share what is your unique value proposition. Uh, you know, highlight themes, specific topics, perspective. Uh, you know, what kind of you know helps you to differentiate your show from others, and and educate them or share with them what value would that you know would they bring. Uh, you know, if they if they were to be on your show, you know, how valuable would that experience be? So this really helps, you know, share that value. Second, OK, have like a a personalized and a compelling pitch. So I would not actually share uh, the same email template I spoke to you about when it comes to reaching out to somebody who is a highly influential person. Uh, I would really conduct my research. OK, start engaging with this guest very, very early on. So let's say that, uh, you know, Natasha is a high profile individual, OK, who I've been thinking of interviewing for a really long time. So what I would do is I would reach out to Natasha, probably try sending him, you know, her a connection request, engage in the post on social media, comment on things, like it, repost it, reshare it. Uh, try to build a connection there, okay, to a point that, you know, we would start exchanging messages. When I say messages, messages over social media, like, hey, how are you? I found this post interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. You know, have these small bits, tiny pieces, try to build some momentum, okay? When you actually send out DMs saying directly, like, you know, would you like to be your guest? Most likely, they would uh, you know, say no, because they usually get a lot of messages, something similar. Instead, engage in their content, say, I, I found this like, you know, interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. It really helped my day. I have an amazing experience, stuff like that. Send these kind of messages to those individuals, build some momentum. Okay, and reach a point that they would be interested in asking you, like, what do you do? Like, and then you introduce like, you know, I'm a podcaster, this is what I do. And stuff like that and build, uh, you know, a conversation. It's a time consuming process, but it's the most effective process of how you can find high profile clients. When you do send them a pitch, make it very personalized, uh, show appreciation for all the things which they have shared, their knowledge. Uh, it's not about you and your show. It's about what they are, who they are, what value they bring. Uh, you know, try to highlight those things. Uh, speak about... Uh, some of your, uh, you know, your background a bit, the kind of guests whom you have interviewed, if you had any high profile guests on your show, you know, let them know that, you know, these are some of the people whom I interviewed, give them links to those episodes so that they can hear it first off. Uh, get a general idea. What are your interviewing skills? What kind of questions you ask? So, you know, be a little ahead of the game. Okay, and be respectful. Okay, now for an example, I've been trying to reach out to, uh, you know, the speaker. Her name is Lisa Nichols. Okay, I've been having this conversation with her team. She's a very highly influential person uh, in the world. I have watched a ton of her videos, quite motivational. She's one of those inspiring individuals I look up to, Lisa Nichols. Okay, and... I, 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 I have been messaging back and forth with their teams since January of 2023. And, 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 you know, just a few months back, I, I got a message from them that, you know, 
we would try to have her as a guest on your podcast again no surety we will try next year on season 5 so i hope you understand uh, the level of work which goes there to find influential people or people who are high profile it just takes a lot of time and second in most cases you would not be able to speak to them directly there would be some sort of a va or a secretary secretarial person in between who would be coordinating and helping you out okay if if the message which you are sending uh, if the pitch which you are sending to these individuals if they are not compelling uh, the va or the secretary uh, would simply disregard or just uh, you know delete your email or the message This is the reason I say try to connect with those individuals on social media where you know that they might be posting for sure. Okay, it doesn't have to be it it should not be a bot. It has to be them. Okay, if the person goes on Instagram live or something of that sort, go watch that video along with them. Comment on it. Okay, make your name visible repeatedly. Okay you have to keep engaging with them regularly the moment you keep engaging with them they would remember you oh leslie oh jason i've seen this guy numerous time thank you so much for showing up regularly like i remember the people who come and listen to my show okay this really helps something similar all right so the next point is uh, you know leverage your network so if you do have people whom you have already interviewed okay i have noticed if if you ask them to refer you somebody who can be a good guest okay who might be slightly influential they usually recommend you people whom they know who can be a good fit so so for an example i interviewed somebody who was the i interviewed tom dusenberry who was the ex ceo of hasbro interactive to to find him it took me a while okay it, took quite a few interactions but he said yes and through him i was able to find newer people okay you can you can just build up on that i i remember interviewing martin rovinsky okay who is from la and i spoke to him and he was able to recommend me somebody uh, who is a part of golden goldman sachs okay so you build up on existing networks and 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 a lot of your listeners okay whom you uh, you know who regularly listen to your show they might also have or know some individuals who are highly influential so you don't necessarily have to rely on your guests you can also rely on on your listeners to recommend people so if you know wade uh, you know who comes on my show regularly he's a contributor on my show most uh, most of the time he recommended me donald ziraldo who is the ice wine guy in canada you know quite an influential person so i would not have got that opportunity uh if i was not open and looking for things so, okay so so ask reach out to your existing network you never know who who knows who uh, you can leverage that opportunity and and have them as a guest okay so there is don't be shy about it you have to be ruthless and you have to be shameless when it comes to hunting down people whom you want to be a guest okay there's another thing which i also want to let you know is that it's good to find guests who are high profile who are high following celebrity like okay now if if they don't uh, promote the show exactly the same way you do or if they don't show interest in promoting the show having a good high profile guest actually does not make any sense okay i'll explain you why i have i have a lot of people who have interviewed high profile people if they simply don't value what you do and your show and if they don't care to promote it it's not going to build the momentum and traction which you desire now most people think that you know having high profile people or celebrities on show uh, it's going to change your show over time it's going to make be like a success all those celebrities whom you see on podcast on youtube it has taken the podcaster a really long time to build reputation or they have invested a lot of money uh, to make that happen or the podcast itself has a huge following this is the reason why people show up okay so so if you are, if you are just a beginner like me 
okay rookie or somebody who's just started up like in year back and and if you expect uh, you know celebrity guests to be on the show don't think that it's going to cause thunders and thunderstorm it's going to take your show from 10000 subscribers to a million subscribers you know maybe there is a possibility that might happen provided uh, the guest uh, the celebrity or the influencer person whom you're trying to interview also shows the same desire and interest to promote the show otherwise uh, it's just going to be you speaking to walls you know it would not cause any dent or impact maybe over the course of time it might okay but that's my experience and this is one of the reason i'm not looking for high profile or celebrity individuals uh, at this moment of time at least maybe in the future i might okay but that's my take on it okay and i i could be very opinionated with this and and my opinion may be wrong guys okay i just want to be upfront about that okay the next point which i want to make is that you have to demonstrate some credibility so if you have re- received awards if you have analytics if you have certain track record anything uh, which can be tangible which can be shared with the guest uh, please show those credible uh, credibility please show those track records a list of people whom you have interviewed stuff like that show some evidence uh, to make your request a little more tangible to give it some credibility okay now remember high profile guests have a very very busy schedule and they have various commitments and sometimes you may have to wait even for years or months to have them on board it and even if you do get the time and opportunity it's possible you have to be very accommodating when i say accommodating as in maybe i do maybe you do your show for an hour maybe the guest only has 45 minutes or maybe 30 minutes you have to make the best out of what you have okay so be flexible uh, be accommodating and uh, i i can't highlight this enough follow up the fuck out of it like you know follow up irrespective of whether you get a response or no keep sending dms okay personalize it every time okay don't sh- you know shoot the same stuff over and over again keep changing keep remodifying keep experimenting with new new words remember like i said uh, they have a blocker in between a va or a secretary in between who is filtering out those messages okay so that's why i say keep fine tuning the message and keep sending it again and again okay i've also noticed another thing Uh, so when i sent out this email to lisa nickels who i want uh, you know her to be a guest on my show they sent out me an intake form okay so that might happen uh, the guests uh, whom you want to interview may have an intake form th- for themselves which they use to pre qualify you whether you can be a good fit for them so this requires you answering questions uh, like your analytics okay let me give you some examples okay so some of the questions which she asked me what is the purpose of this interview or uh, what would your listeners and viewers take away from this interview please describe your audience demographics age geographical region psychographics profile etc how many people do you have in your database your crm system uh, please uh, provide top 3 social media platforms how many followers you have Okay what kind what are some examples of your product suite and their respective price point this is an interesting question the opposite person want to know at what price point i'm pitching my products and selling it to people so that they know their cta uh, you know i don't know w- what relevance does that make but i think you know they are trying to figure out if we have the same kind of audience i think so uh then questions like how will the in- interview would be syndicated where it would be syndicated Uh, what technology would you ut- utilize okay they asked me provide three dates and time that must be available uh, for the interview and must mu- must be at least six months out something on those lines these are some of the questions uh, which a high profile guest uh, you know ask me to share with them uh, about my podcast so you know be pre- prepared to answer such questions and fill in those forms so that's about you know how you can find uh, you know high profile guests and how to reach out to them there's no other secret to this uh, very simple straightforward these are the strategies i hope it makes sense guys all right so let's start with q and a uh, quickly so if anybody else in the listening lounge want to come up and ask me questions before we wrap up the show please do lesy do you have a question for me No, I'm just enjoying and getting all the value out of today. Thanks. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm just gonna wait for a minute and 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 you know just the recap while if anybody decides to come on stage, you know, feel free. So again, you know, just recapping some of the things uh, which I shared to find high profile guests. Very simple. Okay, follow up continuously. Be flexible and accommodating, especially with your show schedule. Be ready to fill up forms if they ask you to, uh, you know, showcase. some track records and credibility to indicate that you are a genuine show leverage your network people whom you know could be friends uh, family members listeners or even guests okay if they know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who can be a good fit uh, please have them okay personalize the message which you send out to them email text whatever send it to them on multiple platforms try to build some connection with the individual personalize it okay go slow okay be decent be respectful to them okay remember um, a lot of people reach out to them uh, you know for promotion stuff like that so they've been bombarded with these things so go slow be respectful okay clearly define the value you bring stuff like that so that's the thing which i wanted to share so i wanted to thank you all for listening to this conversation i hope it gave you enough value uh, if you thoroughly enjoyed this please dm me let me know how i did uh, whether the monologue made sense to you if it was helpful or not please reach out to me over linkedin social media like instagram i am not no longer on facebook so instagram or linkedin reach out to me and i would be more than happy to uh listen to what you have to contribute and and your feedback and understand you know uh, whether it made a lot of sense so natasha uh thank you thank you so much for and brian thank you so much for being here to the very end and even cas leslie thank you so much guys you take care of yourself have a lovely morning afternoon evening wherever you are in the world thank you